Hey guys, today we have Dr. Sule on set. Welcome, Dr. Mm -hmm. uh, for you. those who don't know her and maybe this is your first time to watch our videos, I'd like her to just give a brief introduction. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Christina Sule and I'm a consultant obstetrician and a general cosmetic gynecologist in my private practice, Alora Medical Practice. And I'm again very grateful welcome. to be here today. Welcome, welcome. I always enjoy having her here. There's a lot of things I learn. I think it's free consultation and even for anyone on set, other than the only male on set, apologies Nick. And today's topic you're going to talk about the platelet-rich plasma therapy, which is the PRP therapy. I don't think I'll say the full name again. It's like a tongue twister. Platelet, platelet rich plasma. Platelet rich plasma. PRP therapy. So Dasha is going to say what it means and what that um that word means. I think it's something that has been used in many, many medical fields, but today she's going to concentrate on just the gynecological field and she'll just uh, give a brief description of what PRP therapy is. So um, PRP is a novel therapy. It's a form of regenerative medicine. Mm -hmm. It's where we're using the body's own cells for it to heal itself and to cause regeneration of the cells. So uh, basically we're trying to make the body utilize its own resources to heal very many different conditions. And as you mentioned, it's been used in very many fields of medicine. Mm -hmm. It's been used in dermatology for people who have hair transplant or hair loss. Um, it's been used in... Rejuvenate yes, the skin. to rejuvenate the skin. Oh. It's been used um, in cardiology. It's been used in sports medicine. Uh -huh. It's been used in, you know, orthopedics. orthopedics it's been used yeah. in very many fields of medicine. Mm -hmm. It's very novel. Um, it's basically the latest uh, regenerative medicine that is happening at the moment. So we are using your own blood. Yes. Okay. In short, basically, what the, like if you're just a layman, we are using your blood sample. So how do you do it? How do you get the rich plasma after you get my blood sample? What is the process? So we take uh, we take the patient's uh, blood, we mm -hmm. centrifuge it yeah, mm -hmm. at a particular rate in a particular machine. Mm -hmm. Now what that does is that it separates the red blood cells from everything else. Mm -hmm. Now what is the everything else? The everything else has platelets, stem cells, has growth factors, has some things called cytokines, chemokines. I won't go into all the details, mm -hmm. but it has the good very good <laughs> things and immunological substances that now regenerate the tissue. So basically uh, what we we are needing from you and the process for the patient is just to draw about 20 ml of blood most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, what does PRP contain? Once you centrifuge it, what is now that main um, uh, substance component that you now use to now inject it back in that area of your body? Oh, so basically, um, the main um, ingredient is platelets, and that's why it's called platelet-rich uh -huh. plasma. Uh -huh. But the interesting thing about it is that the concentration of platelets is not what we have in our blood. Uh -huh. So, for example, if you had times one concentration of platelets in your blood, platelet-rich plasma has times six or even more. Uh -huh. And the fact that they are concentrated, the fact that it's rich in platelets is what gives it that action. But other than the platelets, um, there's also stem cells, there's growth factors, there's some substances that remove infective agents, mm -hmm. so it can be used to treat infections as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. There's some substances that um, improve uh, wound healing, for example. So there's many rich substances that I really don't want to mention no, the medical terms because I don't to want to confuse headache. people. Mm. <laughs> but um, very many substances that really help tissues to regenerate um, um, and help them to come together and just heal and become healthier. Okay, yeah. so that's how it works. That's how it works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In your field, like as a gynecologist, as a OBS guy, it's a very big word. I usually avoid, avoid, avoid <laughs> saying it. In your field, how do you use uh, PRP? In um, what do you use it? What conditions do you treat using PRP? So there are very many conditions that um, can be treated using PRP. Uh, one of the ways, one of the reasons why we use PRP for gynecological conditions is because it makes new blood vessels form mm -hmm. and new cells form. And whenever new blood vessels form, the delivery of nutrients and oxygen to that tissue becomes much better. Mm -hmm. So that tissue generally becomes much healthier. So one of the uses, um, and the one that's like, of course, the most popular mm -hmm. is the O-Shot. Mm -hmm. um, so the O-Shot is uh, basically a therapy where we take PRP and we inject it into the G-spot and into the clitoris mm -hmm. and we use that to treat female sexual dysfunction. So women mm -hmm. who have difficulty achieving orgasm, mm -hmm. women who um, 
take too long to achieve an orgasm. Women who um, have pain during sexual intercourse, women who have vaginal dryness, the OSHA usually treats that. I was so that's, for the dryness part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. one of the uses of PRP, mm -hmm. the OSHA. So that it helps to treat sexual dysfunction. Yes, female so sexual there's dysfunction. There's also um, vaginal rejuvenation. Yes. So, um, uh, as you've mentioned, PRP can be used for vaginal rejuvenation. And so basically what we do is we take the PRP and we inject it in other parts of the vagina and the vulva. So what it does is that it makes new blood vessels form in the outer parts of the of the vulva and inside the vagina. And of course that makes it healthier. And whenever new blood vessels form, the nerve endings around that area become extremely sensitive. sensitive. So not only does it look better, not only is it healthier, not only does the lubrication return, mm -hmm. but also also, um, it allows for increased sensitivity, which is also contributing to our sexual pleasure. Okay. So that's our way of doing. Of course, there are other ways of doing uh, vulvovaginal rejuvenation, but PRP is yeah, one of the them. Radio, the therapy. Yes. Um, radio, frequency. radio frequency. Yes. I'm saying all these things because I've done it. I'm done not here because I've done, done, done it. I have done it. <laughs> Anything new? I have nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yet. It, it's also used to treat uh, mild, moderate uh, urinary incont incontinence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some women who have um, urinary incontinence, meaning they're not able to contain their urine, many times we do injections of um, platelet-rich plasma under the surface of the urethra so that they're able to contain their, their urine. Now, um, remember, it's really mild to moderate. For those who have moderate to severe, they usually require to see a urogynecologist and they require surgery to be able to lift the urethra up so mm -hmm. that it's able to actually hold the, the urine, especially if it's stress urinary incontinence. But for those who have very mild, um, other than other therapies or in addition to other therapies therapy. like radiofrequency therapy or laser therapy, you can do PRP therapy for urinary incontinence that's okay. mild. Yeah. You also spoke about wound healing. Yes. So um, in gynecology, uh, one of our main wounds is the caesarean wound, yeah, the caesarean section wound, um, or a wound that happens maybe after a hysterectomy. Uh -huh. We call it a fan and tail incision. So that lower bikini line incision, that's, that's the wound aware. I mostly deal with. <laughs> Yes. Uh -huh. So for those of you who've had cesarean sections, you know, now some women, the wound healing is very poor. Mm -hmm. So for those who want to have better wound healing after their cesarean, mm -hmm. one of the things we can offer them is to inject platelet-rich plasma along the cesarean section when we are stitching it up and the wound healing is fantastic. Or for those who do not have very good healing, even after maybe they had their cesarean and they did not have PRP mm -hmm. um, during the cesarean, after the cesarean, maybe a week or two, if the wound healing is not optimum, mm -hmm. they can still have the yeah, PRP yeah. injected to improve I the wound no healing yeah. when I was having my CS yeah. because that PRP would have worked yeah <laughs> to do anything sometimes people don't people who have diabetes and exactly. um, struggle with wound healing exactly yeah. and exactly. so the faster your wound heals less uh, uh, risk of infection yes. it's easier for you to get back to your everyday work exactly. so these are options people need to be aware of yeah. okay so wound healing do you use prp to treat menopause and related menopause issues yes. like conditions related to menopause yes we do um we use uh, prp a lot for menopause uh, one of the reasons we use it in menopause is because of vulvovaginal atrophy mm -hmm. um basically that is a condition in menopause where you get vaginal dryness mm -hmm. the surface of the vagina becomes not only dry but also very fragile very sensitive very, sensitive, very thin um the ragged that are usually there because the vagina is generally ribbed they mm -hmm. tend to disappear mm -hmm. so the vagina now becomes very smooth which is actually not um recommended. not not recommended and not conducive for for sex <laughs> recommended it's yeah. like you can't buy it yes not conducive for sex and yes it, it can actually lead to painful it leads to painful sex yeah. it leads to no. tearing of the vagina oh, bleeding yes. during sex um even tearing of the tissues around the vagina the mm -hmm. tissues between the vagina and the rect the anus it, it's very uncomfortable so sometimes we can use platelet rich plasma either on its own or with other um, therapies to be able to improve that area to restore the lubrication to restore the health of the vagina and the vulva to make it more sensitive not as dry um to relieve pain during sexual intercourse so it is a form of Valvo vaginal rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I'm not notes. <laughs> the pay consultation charges are coming. Thank you. Um, uh, we also use a PRP for ovarian rejuvenation. Yeah. And um, 
the last video the that last we video did. that we did when it, about female infertility yes mm -hmm. so it's a really good form of ovarian rejuvenation and basically what it does is that we take this prp and we just inject it into the ovaries of women who have trouble with ovulation mm -hmm. either the ovulation has stopped or it's not optimum or um, there's a hormone called anti-mullerian hormone it might be very low it's an indicator of the ovarian reserve mm -hmm. so when that hormone is low or when there's a hormone called follicle stimulating hormone and that hormone is very high many studies um a lot of them published in 2020 have shown that injection of prp into the ovary actually improves the ovarian reserve improves ovulation and also increases the level of the anti mullerian hormone and decreases the follicular stimulating hormone which is what is a proper environment for ovulation to mm -hmm. happen so if you have prp injected into your ovaries it is one of the ways of improving your chances infertility oh, even IVF yeah. increases exactly okay. exactly we actually like to do it before IVF it increases your chances of conception in IVF yeah. Yeah. Uh, we also have the repeated implantation failure yeah. RIF yeah like IVF so this is IVF yeah okay it's IVF mm -hmm. so many times when women do IVF they find um, difficulty in conceiving even with IVF mm -hmm. and one of the reasons for that is repeated implantation failure oh. so you harvest the ovum you combine it with the sperm oh. you get an embryo now when you transfer the embryo into the womb the implantation doesn't happen mm -hmm. and that failure of implantation happens re repeatedly over mm -hmm. and over again so it's like repeated almost you can call them miscarriages the implantation mm -hmm. does not happen very well so for women who have repeated implantation failure one of the studies some of the studies that have been done have suggested that we can inject prp into the lining of the uterus to make the endometrium more receptive towards this embryo that is coming in from outside okay. so that the implantation does not stop failing over and over mm, again so it's more receptive and yes it, it becomes healthier okay. it's thicker it's very receptive to the embryo okay yeah. we, have, we also have inadequate thin refractory endometrium so inadequate um, endometrium is just basically when the endometrium is too thin ah, yeah so it's okay. like it's we call it refractory it's not prop mm. it's not a good endometrium mm. for for implantation so it's almost the same as repeated implantation failure so there are some women who um, will have the implantation and then it fails and then there are some women who are going to have a scan even before the embryo has been transferred because and you find the, the endometrium the is, is not going to, to see, support anything. Going to support yeah. anything yeah yeah okay yeah. lastly we also use a PRP for refractory endometrium in ART or IVF? Yeah, so in IVF, there are times when you have the IVF process done and then before the embryo is transferred into the womb, your gynecologist or fertility specialist does a scan just to see what is the lining looking like. Is there a chance that there'll actually be implantation happening or not? And even before the embryo is transferred, you find the lining is not adequate mm -hmm. or is refractory. So okay. um, your, your fertility specialist will advise you and say, look, this lining does not look very good. Chances of implantation here are poor. So if the endometrium or the lining of the uterus is found to be refractory, PRP can be used to make it better, to make it thicker, thicker. to make it more receptive once to again, to be able to support even before the embryo transfer okay. has happened. Okay. Which is, I think it's a better way than doing it and then realizing exactly. it. It's just doing due diligence before we go through with the IVF. Okay. Yes. So before I conclude the video, I just want to uh, clear a few things. Drawing the blood, which is what you need 20 mLs to 30 mLs, is not painful. No. It doesn't take long. Centrifuging doesn't take long? No, about 10 minutes. And what about injecting it into the exact tissue or organ, for example? I know, like when I did the O-shot and I did the vaginal rejuvenation, it didn't take long. I thought it was going to be painful. It wasn't because she numbed the area with cream. So I think generally it took me less than one and a half hours, two hours. So is it, um, does it take long depending on where it's being injected back into? So yes, uh, it does depend on where you're going to inject the PRP. Mm -hmm. um, it usually does not take long. Mm -hmm. I would say one of the longest is the ovarian rejuvenation. The rest are very quick. They're just being in injected into surface tissues or into the vagina mm -hmm. or into the wound. So they're fairly quick. Mm -hmm. Now for ovarian rejuvenation, it takes a little bit longer because um, it can be done either at transvaginally using an ultrasound so that we visualize the ovary with an ultrasound okay. then we inject through the vagina or it can be done through laparoscopy where you go into theater you have a laparoscopic surgery and you inject the ovaries with the prp so that takes a little bit longer okay, and may require admission and sedation for a short okay. time okay. yeah so that's the longest and 
that's not painful because you're actually you're sedated. Actually yeah. yeah. So From, PRP is almost it's never sp- painful. Exactly. It's yeah. pain, in it's gynecology. Painless. In gynecology, yeah. I don't know for other um, medical yeah. fields and other other organs, but for me, what I've experienced wasn't it wasn't painful. I was worried about that uh, because also they are sensitive areas. And uh, number two, it didn't take long. If you're not, I'm not scared drawing blood. Mm. And I think also it depends on um, preparation before it happens. Yes. Make sure that you've done your research. You've spoken to your doctor. You clearly understand what um, therapy involves, and also to manage your expectations. What are, what do the results look like depending exactly. on everyone's body is different. Exactly. Manage the patient's expectations. So that's actually what would be your parting shot for anyone who wants to try PRP therapy um, in terms of their reproductive health. What would be your parting shot? What would you... For me, I'd, I'd encourage someone to try it. I always say when you're struggling with something or having challenges, you'll never know, you'll never get a solution unless you try. So what would be your parting shot for any patient who's considering PRP therapy? So my parting shot would just be to reiterate what you've said. Do your research on it. Find out the success rates of each therapy because some of them actually have very low success rates. Some have very high success mm-hmm. rates. Um, get consent. You know, read through your consent. Know exactly what it entails. Know exactly what to expect. Um, PRP therapy really depends on how the person is able to produce cells. So it does vary a little bit. Mm-hmm. Not everyone is able to, to regenerate their cells in the same manner. Mm-hmm. Not everybody's wounds heal in the same mm-hmm. manner. And so um the doctor will be able to tell you what is the range of the success rates what is likely to happen what should you expect how quickly should you expect it because many times people do prp and they think the next day things are going oh, to be better it takes sometimes yeah. between 21 and 90 days mm, for the prp mm, to actually mm, work mm. so that would be the things that i would advise people to take into consideration before taking any form of prp therapy for whatever reason yeah. And also, yeah. I think another thing people need to remember is ensure that you're healthy, ensure that you're eating well, you're exercising. You want your body to be at its um, healthiest or uh, operating at its maximum so that you increase your chances of the PRP to be a success. So yes. I, pre- I, I think, you know, quit smoking if you smoke, quit drinking, eat healthy, exercise. At the end of the day, it's like everything else, prepare. Prepare yes. to win, prepare to to go through the whole marathon. So I think also that's something to consider. I don't know if it's a factor medically, but I personally, if I was investing my money, my time in trying something else, I'd ensure that I'm at my optimal health. Like I'm really, really trying my best to keep my body at its optimal so that we get better results. Mm. That is actually very important medically. And in fact, for smokers, they cannot receive or get PRP Uh if they've not been... So they have to quit smoking for three weeks Mm -hmm. prior to getting any PRP. Mm -hmm. And even then how PRP works in them is actually much less. So you're very right about keeping your body at its best Mm. health, even for your PRP therapy to work. Mm. Same as surgery, you know, before you have surgery, ensure that your body is at its best so that it can heal faster. Because it's a system at the end of the day, it's connected, uh, your liver needs to function well, your heart, you know, digestion, you're eating healthy, you're hydrated. So I think all these things do play a part. And if there's anything I've learned in life, always prepare. It's like you're going for battle. Are you ready? Are you prepared? If I'm spending this money, I'm taking time, then I need to also play my part so that the Shari can play her part, medicine and science can play its part, exactly. and then you'll say I tried my best. Yeah. Um, hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, like, share, subscribe. Dr. Sule has a new YouTube channel. Make sure to go and watch, subscribe, send her questions, uh, visit her clinic on the 6th floor. You guys know her clinic, Alora Medical Center. It's always a beautiful place. I always love the the reception it's a guy the reception is such a nice guy um <laughs> it's a very beautiful place and thank i love you. the customer care thank and for those you. who've been going thank you very much thank you for taking charge thank of you. your reproductive health and until next time guys bye, bye.